Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast. Today we are marking an important milestone, 300 episodes. We are happy to have you as our audience and are proud to provide you with latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. Due to the recent Russian attacks, we are now often doing it without electricity, but with power and light in our hearts, which we want to share with you. If you want to support us, you can do so by subscribing to our Patreon or sending us a one-time tip via PayPal. You can find more details in the description to this episode. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 250 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. Yesterday, Russia launched another series of missile and drone attacks against Ukrainian infrastructure, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to Prime Minister Denis Shmigal, over 10 regions of Ukraine were attacked. As a result, 18 objects were damaged, most of which are energy facilities. The Prime Minister stressed that the consequences could have been much worse, but thanks to the heroic and professional work of the air defense forces, majority of the missiles fired at Ukraine's territory were shot down. The police informed that at least 13 people were wounded in these attacks. Shmigal said that emergency blackouts were initiated in Kyiv, Zaporizhia, Dnipropetrovsk and Kharkiv regions. Yesterday, 80% of Kyiv's residents were left without water supply, 350,000 departments without electricity. By evening, these figures were 40% and 270,000 accordingly. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Russia carried out a large-scale missile and drone strikes on Ukraine, at least to an extent, to retaliate for the recent attack on the Russian Black Sea Fleet in Sevastopol Bay, reports Suspilne. The Russian president warned that they can do more. In his evening video address, President Volodymyr Zelensky said that most of the objects that Russian terrorists identified as targets were saved. Yesterday morning alone, they used 55 cruise missiles for a massive strike, 45 of which were shot down. Plus, four more Russian helicopters were shot down yesterday, three attacked Ka-52 and one Mi-8, informed the president. He said that Ukraine will continue to strengthen its air defense, but already now, for every 10 hits, Russians have to spend at least four times more missiles. Russia has an even worse result with regard to drones, including those supplied by its Iranian accomplices. One of the largest power generation companies of Ukraine, the tech, informed that they already used the stock of spare equipment they had to restore the energy infrastructure, reports Unian. According to executive director of the tech, Metro Saharuk, the company is buying some equipment, but its cost is now measured in hundreds of millions of dollars. He informed that the company is working on getting everything it needs from Ukrainian partners. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said that Kyiv already has agreements with 12 countries on assistance to restore the energy infrastructure after the Russian attacks, reports European Pravda. He clarified that among the equipment that Ukraine receives are generators of various types, automatic switches, heat guns and others. One of the missiles launched yesterday by Russia was downed by the Ukrainian air defense and its parts fell on the territory of Moldova, damaging several buildings, reports European Pravda. In response, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Moldova declared an employee of the Russian embassy persona non grata. Volodymyr Zelensky had calls with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. The president sent Scholz for the provided IRST air defense system, which proved its effectiveness. They discussed the possibilities of increasing German support for Ukraine, in particular in the restoration of infrastructure after terrorist attacks. Zelensky informed Gutierrez about the new level of escalation due to Russian actions. He believes that terror against Ukrainian energy facilities, efforts to worsen the global food crisis, clearly indicates that Russia will continue to oppose itself to the entire international community. And if so, Russia should have no place in the UN Security Council and all other international structures, stressed Zelensky. UN Deputy Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs Martin Griffins said that Russia's decision to suspend its participation in the Black Sea Grain Export Initiative from Ukrainian ports doesn't mean end of the deal on this initiative, reports RBK Ukraine. He stressed that Russia did not terminate the grain agreement and did not withdraw from it. Griffith informed that the UN, Turkey and Ukraine will continue with the initiative and will inspect ships that are coming for the grain and living with it. 
Regarding to Russia's accusations that one of the grain ships was used to launch an attack against the Russian Black Sea Fleet, UN representatives said that it is impossible, as there were no civilian ships in the area on that day. The Defense Ministry of Russia stated that it is suspending movements through a so-called grain corridor and gives no safety guarantees for any objects in it, reports Romatske. They say that no ships will be allowed to pass until the Ukrainian side accepts additional obligations to not use this route for military purposes. The ministry added that Russia is not leaving the agreement but suspending it. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.